Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Ed Bud here and today I've got a comparison video for you between the Nike Vaporfly Next% Percent and the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. Before we get to that though, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below as to when new videos are launched and give that like button a smash for me, I would appreciate it. So these big game racing daps feel like an ideal comparison really. Although they differ in price, they have a very similar implementation of a very cushioned responsive midsole and a carbon plate. Heel to toe drop is slightly different with 8 mil in the next percent and 10 mil in the fuel cell TC. At present the next percent is still available in a few stores at around about 240 pounds and the fuel cell TC for 180. So we'll start with upper first. The next percent has that wafer thin vapor weave upper material. Some people have really enjoyed this material, others not quite so much, they preferred the fly knit from the previous version, or even going back before that to the original version of the 4%. I've noticed that the vapor weave doesn't really give too much over time, it kind of is what it is out of the box. It's actually quite breathable, or at least more breathable than it first feels when you get it in hand. It does feel like a weird kind of meshy, almost tent-like material. I think people get it in their minds, it's gonna be quite warm, it's gonna be quite hot, but it isn't like that at all really with this shoe. There's reasonable support from the upper here, but you do get the feeling like it's really just there to hold that substantial midsole onto your foot. That side, I've never had any real major issues with rubbing of this vapor weave material. Aside from a small blister on the very edge of my ankle at one point in my green pair of the next percent. That was where I was running on a track and just turning left all the time. I found them very good in terms of allowing moisture to escape out of the shoe if it does get inside. It does leave your foot feeling quite dry, I wouldn't say ridiculously good in that aspect, but the vapor weave does help to get rid of that water once it's inside the shoe. The TC does have a generally thicker upper across the whole length of the shoe. Most of the action though is in the heel area. You got the suede and that more considerable counter at the back to provide a little bit more support in the heel. I found the lockdown actually surprisingly good in this shoe, even despite these weird pinstripe laces. Kind of makes me wonder why they opted for that and not just some standard laces. It's really weird. I find I get less pressure on the top and sides of the foot than in the next percent, which is weird considering the whole offset lacing thing on the next percent we're supposed to reduce that pressure on top of the foot. I think we're supposed to limit it or at least alleviate some of it, but I just get a better lockdown with this shoe. Just feels more normal on your foot, in fairness. I'll tell you one thing, it's a hell of a lot easier to put this shoe on than the next percent. You do have to spend a little time with that shoe, getting the tongue just in the right place and then slowly fastening the laces up, sort of cinching them very slowly, making sure that tongue doesn't move about too much. This one, you just put it on and run. That's, that's always a good thing. If you're strapped for time, as everybody is right now, you know, no one's got any spare time at all, have they? So I think the soft and more supportive nature of the upper on the TC with that straight, more padded tongue make it the winner of the upper category for me. On to midsole now, and it's going to be very close, I'll tell you that for nothing. I will go on record now and state that the fuel cell midsole material is the closest thing that I've found to Zoom X. There you go, I've said it. It's really highly cushioned, the fuel cell material. It is really quite something. I've said before, it feels a little bit like tree bore soft mints and pizza dough infused with the power of a well shook Coca-Cola can. I, I want to tell you it's very, very different to Zoom X, but I don't think it is very different. There are differences, yes, in the feel. I think probably weight is one, but they are quite similar. And that's coming from somebody that's run hundreds of miles in Zoom X midsole shoes. Now, I haven't just pranced around in them on the grass for a mile. It really gets my goat when people do reviews like that. Yeah, this is the best shoe ever, this new version, you've got to go and get it. I would say that the TC feels like a bit of a mix between the 4% fly knit and the next percent, certainly in terms of the midsole anyway. There's more of a landing area in terms of the midsole, it's just far wider, just feels more stable than the 4% fly knit, and on foot it doesn't feel anywhere near as narrow in the arch as the next percent. I think you could say actually the TC is more comfortable on foot than either of those shoes. There's less of a closed in feeling around the foot, a more trainer like midsole feel than the next percent certainly. So at 50 miles there's a little bit of creasing here in the midsole as you can see in the heel, next to nothing though as you move further up the shoe. I have been using these at a faster pace though, 7 minutes 30 per mile and higher really. I haven't done anything else in them lower than that. I found the next percent is super soft on unboxing. I've got two pairs of these, I've got a green pair, the original ones that came out in a size 11, but these are in a size 11 and a half, the Hakone Ekaden edition. Aren't they wonderful? 
That midsole does compress a little bit once you get a few miles into the shoe. I find it really does start to hit the spot once you've got about seven or eight miles in. It just really starts to free the midsole up a little bit. The shoe's not quite so rigid. Both of these shoes have got carbon plates, but they feel much more present underfoot than in the Zoomfly 3. That was like somebody got a brick and attached a carbon plate to it. I'm sorry, but that shoe just really didn't work for me. I know loads of you love it, and that's cool. Everybody's opinions are valid. I've done a lot of research into the carbon plates and the use of them within running shoes in the modern time. And I've really come to the conclusion that the major advantage that they have is not to propel us forward, but to provide some stability within that highly cushioned foam that's being used in running shoes right now. I'm going to stand by that as well. I think that is the main reason for incorporating them into some of these shoes. I don't think they act as springs. That's my opinion. If you have a different opinion, that's fine. Eight mile run in these earlier on at seven minutes 30 per mile target pace. I came in a little under that, around about seven minutes 25 per mile. So towards my goal half marathon pace, didn't want to exhaust myself today because I had a lot to do. But I find this shoe stable enough underfoot Others have complained they felt a little unstable. I think it's vastly more stable at pace than the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit and comparable to the next percent. Though I've got to state I do have relatively narrow feet and I don't really weigh too much at all. Both of these shoes are very propulsive. They are great at pace. There is quite an exhilarating feeling you get from wearing them. I think they have that bonus of limiting fatigue as well. Not only just after a run, but also the next day. So in terms of midsole, I'm going to call this one a tie. You weren't expecting that, were you? On to outsole now. So both of these shoes seem to have learnt from the durability problems that people experienced with the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. The outsole on that shoe seemed to divide people. I saw pictures of people with rubber pieces falling off, chunks of foam coming off, even after a few miles. I never experienced anything like that with mine. They were pretty durable. There they are, all red here. I've retired this one now. He gets to hang out here in the shoe sanctuary with Beast. What a fun thing to do all day. No signs of such wear on either of these shoes. This pair of Next Percent's got 100 miles in and there's very little wear at all on the bottom. I did quite an extensive video on the durability of the Vaporfly Next Percent, along with some help from some of the viewers as well. I'll place that video up at the very end so you can check it out. The TC outsole is sound as a pound so far. There's very, very limited wear at the forefoot here and just signs of aesthetic wear in the midfoot and towards the heel. Almost nothing at all, really. It's looking good. If it does hold up as well as the next percent here, then New Balance, you're on to a winner. The forefoot rubber in the next percent is very, very good. It does hold up. Don't worry about using these for training and then racing in them down the line. They will hold up, I promise you. Nike really did hit a home run with the durability of the next percent, but at 50 miles, the TC is looking really good in terms of outsole. Still as fresh as a daisy breaking through the concrete. I think these are going to rock on through many, many a mile yet, so don't fret. A tie for me on outsole between these two shoes. I'm not expecting that either, were you? I bet you couldn't be more surprised if Beast put on a pair of running shoes and beat me in a 5k race. So, on to value next. I think with these two shoes, they are considerably costly, and we need to talk value. We've got to sit down, runner to shoe, and talk value. There's a £60 price difference between these shoes. Is it actually worth it? I think if you're looking for the top tier that get the very, very best from yourself on a race situation, then the next percent could be the way to go. If you're going for distance, you're looking for some propulsion, comfort, and a more of a trainer feel, then I would suggest the TC might be the way to go. If you've got a wider foot, I would suggest the TC might be a more comfortable option for you than the next percent. It is very narrow still. Is the weight difference really worth the 60 pounds? A size 11.5, this one weighs in about 300 grams and 240 grams for the next percent. Is it worth it, that extra 60 pound outlay? I'd suggest for perhaps a non-elite runner, someone who's perhaps not running every day, maybe they're picking out a shoe for a marathon or a half marathon they're gonna do. I think the TC could do the trick for you. It's interesting, there's a 60 gram difference between the two shoes and a 60 pound difference too, in terms of cost. I think for training at close to your half marathon or race paces that you might be trying to achieve, then the Fuel Cell TC is a fantastic shoe. I've enjoyed every mile in it so far. I think both of these shoes will last the test of time and before the outsole wears out, the midsole's probably going to lose some of its cushion. But in terms of value, I think the TC is a superb shoe and it wins this round. 
So that's two rounds for the TC and two draws. So I would suggest the TC probably comes out on top here. But like I say, there is a considerable cost difference and only you, the runner, can determine whether that is worth it. If you've got any comments about today's comparison, please place them down below and I shall do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. A very quick musical interlude for you. I've dug out this awesome album by Andrew WK. He's one of my favorite artists ever. The guy has incessant energy, creates the most exciting music too. This album's called The Wolf. Long Live the Party, Never Let Down and I Love Music are some of the key tracks on this one. Andrew's a superb piano player. He really is quite amazing. Do look him up on YouTube. He does some wonderful classical type pieces and he's a really inspiring dude. On this CD issue of the album, you get this fantastic picture of him as well. Do check him out. He did have a new album out a couple of years ago called You're Not Alone, which again is superb. Although I will say, be warned, if you do listen to Andrew WK whilst running, there is the chance that you will increase your pace and completely tire yourself out. It's that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. Please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when my new videos are launched. Hit that like button and comment below. Share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.